Hello, in this video we're going to find the equation of a tangent line using secant lines. Uh, if you're not sure what, a, what, you, what I mean by secant lines, I do have a video which I believe is called Tangent Lines, What Is It? or Tangent Line, What Are They? Um, I'm not quite sure, but you can find the video on the website. So we're going to use secant lines to find the equation of a tangent line. Um, after we do secant lines, and once you learn the derivative, um, you're not going to have to go through all this. But hopefully, understanding how we find the, the slope of a tangent line using the secant lines, the derivative, won't be as confusing to you. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph we, down here, we have down here. Um, here's going to be our point P. Now I just want to note that our function up here uh, these these tick marks are actually different. So, for example, these tick marks go 1, 2, 3, and so on. However, these go up by tens, so 10, 20, 30. So just make note of that uh, when you are trying to follow along and evaluate um, the functions, that these go up by tens. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw the tangent line. Now, because the tangent line is a line, um, to find the equation of a line, we need two things. The first thing we need to find the equation of a line is we need, well, we'll go with slope second. We need a point. Uh, we do have a point right here. Uh, we'll, I'll actually write that down in a second, but that's the first thing we need. And then the second thing we need is we need the slope. Now, the point we have down here is the point negative 2 comma negative 15. So we already have that point. Now we need to find the slope and that's where these secant lines are going to come in. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find our first secant line. Okay, So we're going to take this point P and then we're going to take another point on the graph right there and then we're going to connect these two with a line and now we're going to find the slope of this secant line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a table. Now in this table, I'm going to, on the left-hand column, I'm going to write our second point. Our first point is always going to be negative 2, negative 15, which I've written over here. So the second point, which is this one, is going to be 0, comma, I think it's negative 3. Now how you would find that is we can use a calculator or you can just plug in zero. It's, it's actually pretty simple. If you plug in zero up here, you're going to get negative three. But since we're going to be plugging in a couple, couple different points, uh, what I'm going to do, and this is a nice shortcut on the graphing calculator or any scientific calculator that you can store data, is I'm going to write the function, so negative x cubed plus x squared. So I'm just going to write it in. And then I'm just going to press enter. All right, I'm going to get a value. I'm not really concerned about the value. Okay, so once you clear it, what you're going to do is you're going to press 0, and then there's a store button down here, and then X. Okay, press enter. And then what you do is you call, uh, recall your memory. So you press second, enter, which calls the first thing you just typed in, or the last thing you typed in. Press second, enter again, and it recalls that function. When you now press enter, it's going to evaluate this function but x is now 0, which it's up here. So we're going to get negative 3. And that's, we can write negative 3 there. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to find the slope. Just to remind you, okay, the formula for the slope, which I'll write up here, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now my first point, which I'm going to call this my first point, uh, is always going to be negative 2, negative 15. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing y2 minus negative 15 over x2 minus negative 2. Now this will simplify to be y2 plus 15 over x2 plus 2. It's just now a quick formula I can use to calculate the slope. 
So the slope is going to be m equals, so y2, which is negative 3, plus 15, over 0 plus 2. And that's going to get me 6. So the slope of this line is 6. Now I know my tangent line is going to be negative because it's going down. Um, but we'll get, as this point right here, as it gets closer and closer to my first point, P, you'll notice the secant line slopes will be changing. And remember, if you watch that video, as this point gets closer and closer to P, my secant lines will get really close to my tangent line. So let's go ahead and check another point. So I'm going to choose this point right here. Okay, so that's when x is negative 1. So if you bring out your graphing calculator and you let negative 1 equal x, you do negative 1 store x, and then you can press second enter, second enter, you'll get negative 13. By the way, you can also go into the y equals and you can actually graph the function. Um, but I'm going to stick with this. Okay, so negative 13, so it's going to be negative 1, negative 13. Okay, so let's do the slope. Actually, let's draw the line real fast. You can see my secant line is, is actually getting closer to my tangent line, so that's going good for us. Um, so let's evaluate the slope. So that's going to be my second point, which is, so here's y2 minus y1, which is, you're minusing negative 15, so it's positive, divided by uh, x2, which is negative 1, plus 2. So we're going to plug that in, and we'll get a slope of 2. Okay, so you can see that when 6, 2, we know that the slope is going to go negative, so we got to go negative at some point. Um, so let's try a different point. Closer now. Let's get really close to negative 2. Okay, so I chose the point negative 1.7. So that's really close to negative 2. You can see the points are getting closer. And the y value is negative 15.597. Okay, so we got to find the slope. So I'll let you plug all this in to find the slope. And it ends up being about negative 1.99. Okay, so now we see that it's negative. Uh, let's choose a point now really, really close. Let's do about negative 1.99. Now just for space reasons, I'm going to round, so it's going to be negative 15.04. And then finding the slope, by the way, when you, the point negative 0.99 and negative 2, they're so close together, you can't even tell uh, that they're two different points right here. Uh, when you graph the secant line, you can tell that it's extremely close to the uh, blue tangent line. And when you calculate the slope, it's going to be about negative 3.9. So we went from about negative 1.9 to about negative 3.9. Okay, so we can get even closer. So there's our next point, and the slope is going to end up being 3.99. So it does look like kind of we expect it to be negative 4, but remember, that's the concept of limits, right? What's happening when you get really, really close to something? So as my second point right here is getting close to my P, which is negative 2, negative 15, what would we expect the slopes to be? Okay, um, but you know what we're going to do is we're now going to jump over negative 2. Now we're going to try a point just slightly to the left of negative 2. So here's our point slightly to the left of negative 2. Uh, I plotted it, but again, you can't see it because these point, two points are so close together, they look like one point. You graph the secant line, and it's basically the tangent line. They're so close together, you can barely tell the difference. And when you calculate the slope, on my calculator, I get a slope of negative, oops, about negative 
point zero 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 it goes out quite a bit I think there's a one out there somewhere but notice what happened when we're to the right of the point negative two we have a slope just shy of negative four we go over the point negative two slightly to the left and now we have a slope of negative four so coming in from the right shy of negative four coming in from the left going like that we just well, we're approaching negative 4. So our guess is that the slope is negative 4. So if we come back over to our point, we're going to have a slope of negative 4. Just to double check, again, here's our tangent line. If we evaluate at negative 1.999, um, this actually right here, this represents the slope. And so when we get really close to negative 2, okay, notice this, negative, it's getting, now we're basically at negative 4. If you go just to the left of negative 2, like negative 2.01, you can see we're at negative 4.14. Now it's negative 0.4014. Okay, you can see that it's getting really close now to negative 4 and there you go so we get really really close now it's basically negative 4 so this was just to verify that we do have the right slope okay so now if I want to find the equation of the tangent line we're going to use the point slope formula and that's going to be y minus y1 equals the slope x minus x1 so that's y minus negative 15, because that's my y value at point P, right there, equals negative 4, x minus negative 2. And then we just clean that up, so that's y plus 15 equals negative 4x minus 8. And then we'll subtract 15 from both sides, and we get negative 4x minus 20. Three. And there is our tangent line.